In part A of the question, we have to take the given information and find the so-called demand function. Now, the demand function is symbolized by P of X. We are told that the demand function is linear. So what we've done is taken the given information and we've converted it into graphical form. Let's see how we did that. The question notes that last summer he sold necklaces for $10 and at that price he was getting 20 sales per day. So what we've done is we've plotted the sales on the x-axis and then the price on the y-axis and we can see indeed at this point right here when there were 20 sales then he was selling them at a price of $10. Then the question notes that when he increased the price by a dollar, so in other words, the price increased from 10 to 11, then the sales actually decreased by two. Notice it says they decreased by two. So it's kind of convoluted the way they presented it, but his sales would decrease by two, making them go down to 18 when the price was $11. So that would signify this point right here. And again, this demand function is linear. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is find the equation of this line. We basically have converted the information into two points. We have 18 comma 11, and then another point at 20 comma 10. So to find the equation of a line, we're going to need to come up with the slope. So we'll say that the slope M is equal to the change in Y. Most of us have learned this as X1, Y1, and then X2, Y2. So the equation for slope would be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So we can see the slope here is going to be 10 minus 11 divided by 20 minus 18. We're going to get a slope equal to negative 1 half. Now we can plug the information into the point slope equation of a line. So that equation is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. We can pick either point. We will arbitrarily select this point to plug in. So we go ahead and we say y minus 11 is equal to negative 1 half times x minus 18. And then what we need to do is simplify this equation. Why don't we distribute the negative 1 half on the right hand side. This will give us negative 1 half x plus 9. And then we'll add 11 to both sides, and we end up with y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 20. So this actually turns out to be the equation of that line up here. Therefore, it's the equation of our demand function. So we can write as the final answer that p of x is equal to negative 1 half x plus 20. This would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Let's go and look at part B. It says, if the material for each necklace costs Terry $6, then what should the selling price be to maximize profit? Now we have listed a couple equations over here, and you can see that the equation for profit is equal to the revenue minus the cost. So if we're gonna be able to solve part B, then we're gonna to need to come up with two additional equations. We need the revenue equation, and then we also need the cost equation. Now we can see that revenue is given by this equation right here. So let's scroll down and let's begin part B's analysis by coming up with the revenue equation. So revenue R of X is equal to the quantity sold, which is simply X multiplied by our demand function. Now, of course we came up with the demand function in part A. So we're gonna plug that in. And then what we'll do is simplify. We'll distribute the X this gives us negative one half x squared plus 20 x. So that's our revenue function, but we also need a cost function, c of x. We can go back up and note again that the material for each necklace is going to cost Terry $6. So it's $6 per necklace. To get the total cost, you would multiply that per necklace cost, the $6, by the number of necklaces. So it'd simply be 6x. Good, we have the revenue and the cost function. We next note again that the profit function, which is what we're trying to maximize, is equal to the revenue minus the cost. So we will simply plug in the two functions for revenue and cost that we have obtained. Here again is the revenue function. And then subtract the cost function, which is 6x. We can certainly simplify this to a nice profit function equal to negative one half x squared plus 14x. 
Very good. So now we need to find the point on this sort of profit curve that maximizes profit. You may recognize that because it's a quadratic equation that it's going to be shaped like a parabola. And you might further notice that because it's negative, it's a parabola that opens downward like this. So certainly we have some intuition that there is going to be a maximum profit at some location. So this up here would be your profit, maximum profit, and then down here would be the number of items sold to reach that maximum profit. We have to find that. So how do we do that? Well, we recall that at that maximum point, the slope of the tangent line right there would equal zero. So what we're gonna do to get the slope of the tangent line, of course, is do the derivative. That's what the slope of the tangent line is, the derivative. P prime of X equals, we have some simple power rule right here. We just multiply the two by the negative one half. This gives us negative one X raised to the power of one plus the derivative of 14 X, which of course is just 14. We then set this equal to zero because remember the slope of the tangent line has to equal zero at that maximum. And when we solve this out, we can see that X is equal to 14. So that X right there would be 14. Now, technically, we would have to prove that this maximizes profit. Your teachers might require this extra step. So I like to do the second derivative test in this case. The second derivative test will, of course, require us to compute the second derivative. So here's our first derivative. The second derivative, which we can call p double prime of x, would simply equal negative 1. Now notice, because the second derivative is negative, that that would imply or suggest or show that the curve is actually concave down. You probably have learned that a negative second derivative means concave down. Well, certainly, for a curve that is concave down at the critical point, then we would indeed have a maximum. So this sort of proves that at x equals 14, because the curve is concave down at that point, then we definitely have a maximum profit. So P of X is maximized. And this is according to the second derivative test. Okay, so we know that the quantity to be sold is going to equal 14. Let's just make sure that we've answered the question. It does say, what should the selling price be? What's the selling price? So we have X is equal to 14, but we haven't yet figured out the selling price. Remember, that is what we can utilize the demand function for, the P of X. So we're not quite done because we have to go back and figure out the selling price. So let's remind ourselves that P of X is equal to negative one half X plus 20. Now that we know that we need to maximize profit by selling 14 items, we'll plug 14 into this demand function. So it's negative one half times 14 plus 20. And when we work this out, we're gonna have negative seven plus 20, which of course is 13. So it looks like in order to maximize profit, we need to sell or set the selling price to $13 per necklace, I think this was. Yeah. So there we go. Let's set the necklace price at $13. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But if not, no worries. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.